Okay guys, so in today's video, we're gonna go behind the scenes on a high school senior portrait session. Okay guys, so in today's video, we're gonna go behind the scenes on a high school senior portrait session. We're gonna do half the session inside the studio, half of it outside, and then at the end, we're gonna break out the big studio strobes and do something really cool and creative outside by overpowering the sun and using these, two of these strobes to do something really cool for this kid. He's a track star, he does um, running, uh, pole vault, uh, hurdles. I'm not sure what all you do in track, but I know for a fact he does do hurdles. And actually, we've already filmed this, so I, so I know exactly what happens. And I'll show you the shot we got right now. This was at the end of the session. So if you watch the whole video, you will see how we shot this. Um, I'll go into more detail at the end of the video how I shot those last few shots. Uh, but again, we started off nice and simple and basic inside the studio. Just real simple poses. Guys are fairly simple. There's not a whole lot you can do. Uh, you can get more dramatic if you want to, but I definitely like to be a little bit more simple, more basic, keep the kid comfortable, and just trying to see how they react to certain poses and just kind of work from there. So we're gonna start the video right now and you get to follow along. Here we go. go behind the scenes of what it's like to be in a senior portrait session in our studio now of course you don't have to have a studio you can shoot these outside I'm gonna do a lot of pictures outside as well I'm only gonna do about 25% of my session inside the studio but this is typically where I start at and I like to get my guys smiling uh, not smiling just kind of work it in a little bit see how it reacts to both of those types of poses guys are actually pretty simple you don't have to get too crazy with the posing as far as my lighting setup, uh, for my guys, I like to use a single light source, like a medium softbox. I can really kind of control the light and, and really control what I'm doing. If this was a female, I'd probably use a reflector to kind of fill in the opposite side or even use two softboxes. So his mom is also a photographer. I want to know how this ring light would work if I was going to do like half body shots or full body shots. And usually you just shoot through a ring light, but I want to share how you can use this off axis and actually create some cool soft little shadows off to the side, which is something I'm going for with this guy. I want a little more of a dramatic shot with some shadow kind of showing up on the wall. And this light is perfect for that. So again, before the comments start rolling, I do like some shadow and some shading in my images, especially for guys. I like being a little more dramatic and you know, I'm not trying to eliminate all shadows. I like shadows. So here I did use a reflector to kind of fill in the opposite side. Since I was going to focus more on his face, I really wanted to kind of keep it less dramatic, less shading, and just a little more even with my lighting. So I used one light source and a reflector to kind of fill in the back side. I am pretty fortunate to have these old lockers. We moved in the studio about eight or nine years ago. There was a guy outside in, a, in an old truck with some garbage in it, and it just happened to have these lockers, and I gave the guy 20 bucks and he gave them to us. Super heavy, but man, it was the best investment I ever made. And we do build a lot of cheap sets around the studio. You don't have to have a lot of money uh, to build these sets. You just have to have space, and pretty much everything you see in our studio, we built it from scrap, from other projects, that um, stuff that you know, our other photographers and other, you know, other people that work in our studio that had laying around, and we just painted them up and uh, built some sets out of it. It doesn't take much. So I'm not going to show you every single image that I shot during the session. I'm trying to focus on more of the simple and basic posing. That's kind of the series that I'm working on right now. So, you know, with guys, it's pretty simple. You can fold the arms. You can put hands in the pockets. You can put one hand in the pocket, one in the other. You can have them leaning on something. You can have one hand on the, on the leg like this and you know, one forearm on the leg, one hand pulled back a little bit. Guys are very super simple. They don't take a whole lot. You don't have to get super dramatic. And, you know, this isn't a fashion shoot for him. So keep it simple, it works. For high school senior shoots, you know, having a variety of poses where they're standing up, where they're sitting down, get them on the ground, um, having them smile, have them not smile. Every, every senior reacts a little bit different. And I gotta be honest with you, parents are gonna see their child differently than you do. So a few of the shots that you think may be great, uh, the parent may not like that shot and that's okay. They wanna be able to see their child come out in your photographs. And, at some point during your session, you're going to start to see how this kid reacts to you and your camera. He's going to get comfortable and you're going to start getting some really good images. So right here, I'm actually doing one of my favorite things to do in all photography, all type of portrait photography, whether it's wedding, seniors, and getting that reflection shot. I like getting really close to the surface. The trick is to get your subject close to the surface, get your camera close to the surface. You're going to have a really sharp reflection when you do that. I love these kind of shots. So you want to do some shots with the sunglasses and if you're going to do sunglass pictures you might as well put them out in the sun. Typically you, know, you have the sun to your subject's back or you know some variation of that. In this case I have the sun right smack in his face and he's got sunglasses on. Let's make it look like it's nice and bright. If he was in full shade sunglasses wouldn't make any sense. So here you go. So usually at this point in the session I've already figured out if the kid likes to smile or not smile 
and I will really do more shots of what I feel like he's comfortable doing. So most kids do really well with smiling and I'll do 75% smiles and maybe 25% not smiling or vice versa. Sometimes maybe the guy doesn't like to smile and I'll try to do something a little bit edgier or do more shots with him, with him not smiling. But in this case, this kid does such a good job of both and I'm really kind of splitting the right down the middle 50-50. And I'm even doing a lot of the same uh, locations with both poses, uh, b uh, both not smiling and smiling as well. He's just doing such a good job, so I'm gonna keep it going. So not a pose I would normally do with a guy in a field of little flowers like that, but I like the shot, so we're gonna keep it. So the location we're at, we're actually downtown Waynesburg where my studio is, and there's a lot of like little urban environments for sidewalks and streets, old buildings, old walls. Uh, but if you look hard enough, you can find some greenery. Um, but in this case here with this guy, I'm doing a lot of brick, a lot of concrete, and uh, I like it. I like it for this session. So you probably already noticed the weather outside is perfect. It's a little bit overcast. It's just, just soft enough to get some really good images for our subject today. As far as posing, when you get these guys standing there, get them you know, rock the shoulder one way or the other, just kind of see how they settle into it and either tweak it if you need to or let them sink into it himself. Well, sometimes when I think I have a really good pose and uh, you know I'm getting ready to take the shot, like this one here, I don't really like it. I like the pose, I didn't like the angle, so don't be afraid to pick it from a different angle and switch it up a little bit and take the same shot. And you'll see, I like this angle for the same pose much better. And this shot's 10 times better than the last one. So we are back in the studio getting ready to do some more creative type shots. We have a Ken Smoke, my buddy Ed here, he's my assistant for the day. He's one of our longtime photographers that works here as well. Uh, we have this thing backlit with another studio strobe with a red gel on it. And uh, it's just blended smoke in, in between shots. And one thing about the canned smoke is it does dissipate fairly quickly. It's not like using a smoke machine where it kind of hangs around for a long period of time. The uh, smoke in a can gets kind of hazy and it's perfect for photography. That's why I love using it. You really kind of spray it exactly where you need it like Ed is doing right now. And here you go. So with the flash like this behind your subject, you can put a gel on it with the smoke. You can leave it bare like it is right now. Uh, Coming up next, we're going to add a gel to it. And you'll see making it nice and red to match his jacket will come out really cool. So here's Ed blowing the smoke again exactly where I want it. And that red gel and that strobe just lights that smoke up so easily. This kid has won more medals than I think I've ever seen come through my studio door uh, combined ever. So this is pretty amazing. So we're gonna do a few shots showing off those medals. And by the way, these, these images are unedited. These are pretty much straw, raw straight out of the camera. I did some basic exposure control to get them kind of lined back up, but they're not edited yet. Pretty much straight out of the camera. It's definitely a good idea to find out what your kids are into as far as sports, if there's any kind of activities. You definitely want to kind of focus in on that. So now comes the fun stuff. Now we're going to do some off camera lighting outside in the middle of the day. We're breaking out the big guns, the big strobes. These are 600 watt second heads. Ed is getting them set up. We're going to take two of them outside. We're probably going to shoot them between, I think we shot them full power, quarter power in that range someplace. I can't remember exactly what it was, but I do think it was between full power to quarter power. And you're going to see we're really overpowering the sun in one of these alleys and it's going to be really cool. So we've decided on a location. We're going to walk in this old alley. There's uh, some fire escapes. There's some old brick, old patchy uh, street. And he, he's going to do like the high jump. This kid is uh, into tracks. So and one of the sports he loves is the um, or hurdles, I think is what it's called. So we're going to make him do some jumps. We're just getting some test shots right now, easing into it, getting the lighting right. I'm going to make him do a few poses so I can really dial in the light exactly the way I want it. We're going to give him these images too. But really what I'm trying to do is get the lighting exactly the way I want it. And then we're going to make him jump and do some really cool stuff. Off-camera lighting is absolutely one of my favorite things to do, whether it's a wedding, it's a commercial project, or high school senior. I love this kind of stuff. I like the technical side of photography. So we've got these big 600 watt second heads. They're at quarter power at this point, and I'm still just kind of dialing things in and making sure the sky is knocked down. I'm shooting, two, I think, 200th of a second probably of this setup right here. I'm shooting F11 with a 7200 lens, so I can really kind of reach out and grab this guy. 
from a distance back. I'm really trying to compress the scene down to just the street, some of the buildings. And right now I'm still just getting some test shots, doing some different poses with them, so I can really dial in exactly what I want from my lights. And then we're gonna make them jump and get some really cool stuff. Here I'm just actually just making fun of my assistant, Ed, my buddy. Uh, we're gonna make him uh, race, but then he just kind of gave up and rolled over and uh, said he wasn't gonna do it anymore. So we still took the shot. Gotta have some fun. Okay, so we're definitely getting closer to the big shots. These are the ones I'm most excited about. Not this one here, but coming up next, we're gonna make him jump. Okay, so now we're setting up for the big jump. We're getting the lights raised up exactly where we need them. And I'm telling him exactly where he needs to be when he jumps. He has to be pretty close to the center line. So he's, he's super, super sharp focus. Even though I am shooting at F11, which is a really wide depth of field, I want to get him locked in just like that. Love it. Now, I do want to fix that a little bit. I'm going to get the sky just a little bit underneath of him. So I'm going to go a little bit lower. I want to see some sky under him and over him to make him look like he's really, really flying. Like that there. These pictures are coming out so good. A two hundredth of a second, high powered strobes, the ambient lights knocked down a little bit, he is frozen, smack in the center of that frame, rock solid, sharp, sharp, it's perfect. And now I'm just working on my composition, trying to get a little bit closer, shoot a little bit wider, giving them some options, and I'm, you know, of course I'm trying to catch him at his peak, at the peak height of his jump, uh, but I want to get a couple different options so we can go back and look and see which one is the best. So I'm shooting some horizontal, some vertical, just giving se several options to play with whenever we get back to the studio. We did have to fight some traffic. Trucks kept going by, cars kept going by. We had to keep starting, stopping, but it all worked out. Got some really killer shots, including this last one right here. Okay guys, so hopefully you enjoyed the video. Here's some bonus content for you. I just want to kind of explain my setup uh, that I used outside for that senior shoot that I just did. So this is a 600 watt second studio strobe. It is battery powered. And I had two of these in the shoot. I had them straight across from each other. And I had them jump right in between them. Maybe just a hair back. It was hard to really gauge where he was gonna be, but it was pretty close. As far as the height, I tried to get it about the same height, the same level as him. I didn't want it to be under him. I didn't want it to come down from above him either. I wanted it to be right in the middle. And I didn't use any kind of diffusion. If I was doing like a, a bride or a, you know, a senior shoot for a girl, or I wasn't trying to be as harsh, I would definitely use some kind of diffusion, uh, softbox or just something to kind of diffuse the light down a little bit. But being that this guy is a track star, you know, he's running through the air. I wanted it to be harsh and just aggressive in the photo. And this worked out beautifully. Just using a dish and the bare bulb it worked out great. So I ended up uh, running about quarter power on this on this big old strobe. And I think I was at F11. And I believe it was, I was at 100 ISO. I may have went even a little bit lower on my camera. I can't really remember what it was. And then um, I was at 200th of a second. I did not go into high speed sync. These things are capable of that, but I didn't want to go into high speed sync. When you go into high speed sync, you end up losing a lot of power immediately. So I didn't want to do that. I wanted to have the full power of my flash at my disposal and it worked out beautifully. I use these things for commercial projects. I do take them to weddings sometimes too. If I know I'm gonna like overpower the sun for any kind of shots that I need to do, or if I'm gonna fake the sun or mimic the sun from a distance, this thing works out great, put an orange gel on it. So many cool creative things you could do with this. Commercial projects, going into businesses and doing headshots, using these battery powered studio heads is amazing. So I can't say enough about it. I will link it down in the description so you can check them out. You can uh, possibly get one for yourself. They have a couple different models, but the 600 watt second heads seems to be the most versatile for me. I do have some smaller ones as well. I keep coming back to this big boy here. I keep coming back to the, uh, so I keep coming back to the 600 watt second head. Love it. So there's your little bonus content. Uh, as always, thank you for watching. Hit the like, hit the subscribe button, and we will see you guys next time.